This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining Diagnosing the Aftermarket A to Z. I'm Matt Fonslow, and today is going to be less about diagnosing and more of a public service announcement. I have a bit of a story about a purchase I tried to make over Facebook Marketplace. It was a scan tool interface. It's not really important which one it is. It's for a very common domestic car line, but the price seemed right. It wasn't too inexpensive. You know what I mean? Like unrealistically inexpensive. Uh, But it certainly wasn't list price. And I checked out the profile of the seller and seemed legit. It's from Kentucky. Checked it over. He's got a family, wife, kids, a job. You know, some contact information on his Facebook page. Not a lot, but some. And I just kind of felt good about it. So I messaged him about it. He responded, not right away, but, you know, within an hour. And I asked him why he was getting rid of it. And, you know, he just needed money. And maybe that's a warning sign, but... I I don't think so. I don't see how that could be a real outright warning not to buy something because somebody needs money. You know, back and forth, a couple more photos of the interface, and I I was ready to buy it. Initially, he wanted me to pay with the Cash App, and I don't really use that. You know, accidentally a good thing. The next thing they wanted or asked if we could do his Venmo. He said he didn't have a PayPal account. In retrospect, that's probably a flag. Really, then Venmo. Wanted me to pay him with Venmo. And I have used Venmo with success, and I know a lot of people that use it with great success, no issues. And I didn't really think about it much after that, right? I sent them the money, wrote in the comments, not just in the instant messaging back and forth, but also the comments on Venmo, what it was for, who I was. You know, the payment went through. He said, I got the money. I will send you a tracking number tomorrow morning. Thank you so much. I thanked him. Uh, Kind of, you know, thanking him for a smooth transaction and uh, almost like a relief. I got to level with you. I don't know what possessed me to do so, but I screenshotted the conversation. A few screenshots, I got to scroll through. And and then I screenshotted his Facebook account. Again, I don't know why, because I got, I've not had bad experiences purchasing anything online, be it eBay, uh, of course, Amazon. Uh, you know, those types of purchases that go sideways specifically with Amazon rarely involve Amazon or the seller. It's usually like, you know, FedEx, UPS, USPS, something like that. You know, it's not their fault. I think I said Craigslist already, but, you know, a few things that I've purchased on Facebook Marketplace, usually locally, have gone really well. And uh, the next morning, I didn't see anything. I, you know, I didn't even think about it. I figured I know he's on Eastern time. Uh, So it was a little odd, but, you know, he's going to get to it when he can get to it. I don't know what's going on with him. And honestly, (laughs) I kind of forgot about it. As silly as that may sound, I kind of forgot about it. I just kind of put it out of mind and figured it was on the way. And I, I just didn't pay it any more mind. And after about a week, no messages, no interface. So I, you know, I quick message him like, hey, man, you got that tracking number by chance or, you know, when do you expect it to arrive? No response. And I go back on Facebook Marketplace and I see it's listed again. Same person. So I comment under it like, hey, I I sent payment. Here's a screenshot of the payment being sent. Here is a screenshot of you thanking me for the payment. Uh, Maybe that's a jerk thing to do. I don't know. but. Within, I don't know, 15 minutes, it's pulled down off of Facebook Marketplace and his account is gone and our messaging conversation is gone and I'm out some money and I'm not sure what to do. 
And so what does anybody do when they don't know what to do, <laughs> including fixing cars sometimes? I Googled it. And that's when my blood pressure went way up and anxiety I didn't know I had manifested itself. And I was really starting to sweat that I just gave somebody, you know, not a little about not a little amount of money and nothing to show for it. And, um, you know, got to tell the wife, I just gave somebody some money and I'm not going to get anything out of it. And I don't even know what to do. And after Googling it and seeing all the horror stories, which is, I mean, that's what happens, right? You find a lump on your body somewhere and you Google it, you're pretty sure you're going to die next week. You Google anything with a car, you get the worst case scenario. Then the shop screwed me over. In this case, that's what I saw with the Venmo payment, the Facebook marketplace. And where I'm going with this is it turns out that there's some protocols to follow when buying stuff, which you probably all know and I didn't or didn't observe. But first things first, when at all possible, buy local. Try. Drive to go get it. Give them the money when you have the product in hand. Don't pay them over the, you know, online or over the internet. Second, make sure if you are going to do that, you pay within Facebook Marketplace and you pay with uh, Facebook Pay or probably better yet, PayPal. And within PayPal, if you can pay PayPal with a credit card, like a, you know, one of the heavy hitters, Visa, MasterCard, that's even better yet. Cause I think ultimately that is what saved me. So I did a few things accidentally with Venmo. I used my Visa card. So I wasn't spending my money. I was spending Visa's money or you know, Chase, whoever. Second of all, because I screenshotted everything, I called the police department in the town he lives. And I was worried about how that would go. It was a great experience. They took this very seriously. They got the name. They had me email the screenshots, uh, not only of the conversation, but also the payment. Uh, I reached out to my credit card company immediately or not immediately, but you know, when I made the phone call to the police, I uh, reached out right away to tell them what had happened. Uh, I also reached out to Venmo and I can't tell you really what, if any one single thing helped this go in a more positive fashion or was it the fact that I did all of that? Was it the fact I, did I just get lucky I, I wish I could tell you. I wish I could say, you know, by calling the police department, they visited him, showed him what they knew and that he could be in some big trouble for internet fraud. Uh, I don't know. To me, you know, thinking about the m dollars involved, it would probably be, probably be small claims court. And then I would have to go to him to try to get my money. And I would probably win in court and still may not get my money back. So, you know, this did, this seemed pretty dark for a while. A few days went by. I got a phone call uh, from the police department that they had reached out to him. They had made contact. And I also got a phone call from Venmo, a phone call from Venmo stating that they were refunding me my money. I don't know. They didn't say if they got the money back from the, uh, this person. They didn't say that uh, Chase basically said you're giving him his money back, meaning you're giving him our money back. Not really sure. Um, but this did end up, you know, as positive it could be. I don't have the scan tool interface, but I got my money back. And this is not uncommon. You start looking into this and this is happening far, far too often. And it's you know, frustrating to think that a large entity such as Facebook, and it's not to really beg on them specifically, or I guess maybe a little bit, probably need to beg on them a little bit because you're going to have this resource that easily could be, if not already taking over, but easily be taking over for Craigslist. It could run Craigslist uh, into the ground that they aren't more heavily involved in something like this where it's fraudulent. Even if they had somewhere when you sign up, 
to start using Facebook Marketplace that if you are guilty of fraud, that you're not going to have to worry about just fighting legal battle with the other person. You're going to be fighting Facebook. I could see how that could go, you know, way the other way, you know, especially if you're innocent, having a large entity like that after you. And what are you going to do to defend yourself? They're just going to bleed you dry. But on the flip side, like on cases like this, cases like so many others where something was sold in good faith or uh, maybe not, well, both sold and purchased, right? You have this, the flip side where you've tried to sell something and somebody says they're going to buy it. Maybe they do buy it. And then depending on how they pay it for it, cancel payment. And now they're use it. You don't have your product anymore and you don't have any money either. So anything like that, you would think an entity such as that would be protecting, protecting its users. Uh, it's probably the same argument we would have with Google and um, false or inappropriate. I don't know if inappropriate is quite the right word, but fraudulent, uh, fake reviews that you Google offers this resource for people to check out businesses of all sizes and read the reviews that Google would vet to a point, at least maybe not initially, but if something gets flagged, that they would do a little bit of work to verify that that review is legitimate and deserved. They don't do any of that. They just figure the numbers will wash out. You know, if you have a hundred five star reviews, what's one false one star review? You just respond to it and say, uh, we've never seen you before in our lives. We don't know who you are. We think you might have the wrong uh, facility or business or whatnot. You know, please, please take this down or not sure what to do to get you to remove this, something of that nature to address it. You would like such entities that have these resources protect the people using them a little bit. It would just kind of make sense. Uh, probably, we'll probably avoid going down the Yelp discussion that could go really sideways. So long story short, maybe going around in circles here. If you're going to make the purchase on Facebook Marketplace specifically, try to do it locally. That's usually not where you're going to find what you want though, right? It's always going to be somewhere else. And then when you make, you know, payments or whatever, you're, you decide you're going to risk the, the purchase. Do your due diligence to search the profiles, maybe take some screenshots, learn a little bit about the person, you know, then make sure you screenshot your conversations with them. And then if at all possible, make the purchase within Facebook marketplace, not outside of it. You know, don't text them the money or, you know what I mean? Use an app. Uh, and if you do, whether you're really in Facebook Marketplace or not, if you're going to make that payment outside of Facebook Marketplace, you're going to have to use something that's got some protection built in. PayPal has some protection built in. Uh, use a credit card that has some protection. You're spending their money, not your money. They're going to go back to get their money. They got a little bit more pull than a lot of us have. And then uh, don't be afraid to, um, you know, give people a chance. But after that, you got to uh, get the uh, get the authorities involved and um, just be nice. That's what I was. I wasn't their fault. Uh, I apologized for if I was wasting their time because I wasn't sure it was appropriate to call them. I lucked out. They were extremely friendly. And then you've got all your documentation. You've pretty much proved that it's fraud. Hopefully, you just get your money back. So that's really the point of this episode. I got lucky. Uh, this could have a whole different tone to it. Uh, I'm not skipping uh, around with enthusiasm about it. A little perturbed and you lose a little bit of faith in humanity, right? Yeah, I lucked out. I, it looks like I'm... At least the ones you read about online, I'm one of the few, you know, that could be a skewed view. More people posting about the bad than the good. I guess I haven't posted anything about, hey, I got my money back. So that is my uh, message to everyone out there. And uh, please, if you have any uh, questions or ideas, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you so very much for listening. 
This is Matt Fonzel again with diagnosing the aftermarket A to Z on the aftermarket radio network. Take care. You've been listening to Matt Fonslow diagnosing the aftermarket A to Z on the aftermarket radio network. Follow Matt on your favorite listening app. He's very interested in what you have to say. Let him know what you'd like him to cover and come on the show. Matt is all for advancing the aftermarket. Find Matt Fonslow on social media and connect or on aftermarketradionetwork.com.